So I'm Liz, my husband Dave is here. I've got two sons who are 31 and about to be 34. And we have a grand, uh, we have a mother, I've got, I'm mother-in-law to my wonderful daughter-in-law, Catherine. And Joe and Catherine have just had a baby, so I'm also a granny for the first time. And she's only two and a half weeks old, which is about the same time as I've had to prepare this. So I've been think, seeing the baby and thinking about what I'm going to be saying to all of you today. So that's me. And my, my other son lives in Exeter, and she, he has just got engaged. So it's all family stuff for us at the moment, which is really lovely. And it's, it's really good after a few years of thinking, are we going to have grandchildren? Are there going to be children again in my life? Am I just going to be able to see some children, know some children? But uh, I'm now here, and I'm really pleased to be here. And what I want to talk about today, I haven't got a title, but I felt that God wanted to talk to, 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 to us to talk about our attitudes and expectations across the generations. So that's right in the middle of where I am at the moment, being granny for the first time. But what are our expectations of one another? And I'm not just talking to the adults, I'm also talking to the children. What are our expectations of adults? Do we look at someone and think, well, they're a bit old. Are they going to understand me? Are they going to really know what I'm talking about? Is their experience going to be anything like what I'm doing? Because no one's been alive like I am right now. My experience is different. So what are our expectations of one another from one generation to another? And, and what about, the second part I want to talk about is what about our expectations of children? Do we have high enough expectations for our children in God, in Jesus? How does Jesus want us to think about our children? Not just us, but the children in the church and the children out there out there who aren't in church yet. So it's, it's the whole thing about generations that I've been thinking about. And as I've done so, over the last few years, I've been aware of there being, you know, when you think about the amount of changes that we have faced in the society over a very short space of time, that there's technology, there's changes in communication, there's loads and loads of different things which we could talk about, but it's how it's affected us and how it's affected different age groups. That's what's important. And I think it's caused division, not just separation, but division between different age groups. And we've, we are battling against it as the family of God but it's actually caused divisions in our society. So there are things for children, there are things for the youth, there are things for people who are middle-aged, there are things for the men, there are things for the women, there are things for old people, there's lunch clubs for the old people, there's all sorts of different age groups, which is right and proper, but how do we connect? That's the question. So just thinking about that, just for a bit of fun, some of you children, I thought, I don't feel very old, but actually, now I'm a granny, so I have to accept I'm a bit older. So things that, um, things that I experienced as a child growing up are a bit alien. So I'm going to show you something that's a bit alien that I had to wear to school. I went to an all-girls school, and in the summer, I had to wear this. What do you reckon? Yeah. It's even with my grey. We had a, a grey and red uniform. I had a little purse belt and I had a blazer. It's all very nice. But that is not what you're going to see around today, is it? It's far, I don't know how much it cost. It must have been a lot. And then we were a bit naughty. We used to take that out and it's all signed on the back. So I've got all sorts of signatures from friends on the back. So that's what we did. And they got thrown around a fair amount, I can assure you. So that's my... Boater, which shows my age, I think, really, because I don't know a school at the moment that wears anything on their hat, or, you know, at Berry or anything. I've also got, for those thinking about some toys, I have here some dinky toys. Who remembers dinky toys here? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Or matchbox toys, matchbox toys, yeah, a few of them. 
So again, they're metal, they're not plastic. Those are my dinky toys, they were Dave's. I tried to find some matchbox toys, but um, I didn't find them. And then I've got another item. I don't know if any of you are gonna know, well, let's just think of those who are under 30 for a moment, if you'll know what this is. So uh, I've got to work out how to open it. Can you see this? So is there any, I don't know if any of you, actually the, the top comes off. I'll see if I can lift it up for you. Can you see this? Yeah. yeah. Now, anyone under 30 like to shout out what you think it might be? I can't hear you actually up here, it's but it, it's a tape recorder, an audio tape recorder. It's what Dave used to record Pick of the Pops. Anybody remember Pick of the Pops? So Top of the Pops on a Sunday evening, he'd record it on there. So this is a far, far removed from what we have just bought, which is, we've got, um, I've, we've just got up to date by having a Bluetooth speaker. And we've got one, we were a bit motivated because we have our home church and I thought we really need to be able to play some music on that. And so we've got a Bluetooth speaker and no wires. This has to, has to be connected to electricity. You can't do it otherwise. But there we are, Bluetooth speaker, nothing. I've had to learn Spotify. I've got my Spotify on my phone now. So that's where we're up to. But I'm just sharing that because it's so different, isn't it? Our experiences. And it's fun to share these things. But children, you, this is going to be so foreign for you, isn't it? Something like this. You're going to think, what on earth is that? Is she that old <laughs> to have something like that? And I, when I think back to some of the things that we had when we were little, I think, gosh, it's such a long time ago. There's so many things. But that's why I'm talking about it, because it causes division between generations, because our experiences are really so, so different. And I even thought about um, when I was 21, I traveled to India, which was really good. I went for three months, and I wanted to keep in touch with my family, with my mum and dad, but the only way to do that was to write. So. Over the three months I was away, my mum and dad got six e airmail letters from me. How was that for them? I've just, we, when our, our boys were a little bit younger, they also travelled. But when they travelled, we were able to watch them on Skype. And that was just really, really good. We could communicate, we could see them. And it was wonderful to be think of them in South America or Australia or I think he was in Thailand one time. And we could see him, we could chat to him and find out how he was doing. But my mum and dad, all those years ago, six airmail letters. So communication has changed too. They're massive changes. But there's also things about how we think. Because when, we, when I was growing up, there was much more sense of community. Um, I know that if I went out into where we lived, I had to behave because my, my mum and dad were known in the, in the small town I was in. So, you know, it wouldn't be very good. I'd have, they'd have said something and if I'd misbehaved. Whereas here, there's so much more space that you can go and you're not going to be known much. Yes, by some of us here, but out there, it's easier to, to think, well, nobody knows me. I can do what I like. There's an individuality that's come in to our culture, to our society. And it, I think that crosses all nationalities. This sense of, uh, you know, our culture affects us wherever we're from, even if we try to keep our roots as they should be with family and community. And, and I mean, things that we may see... I mean, social media is another th way in which um, there can be division too. And all of that, I think the enemy is at work. He's at work through these things. Some of them are really good, but we can see. If we are looking, we can see the enemy's work to divide us. And, and, and I think about 
some folk who are on, say, new estates, and there's such isolation there, both, both um, men and women going out to work, they're not able to meet their neighbours so easily, there's some of the new estates don't have any community centres, there's no church, there might be a school, but it's, there's nowhere to gather. So, you know, when we look at all of this, there's no disputing that there are real divisions that we need to overcome as, as people who follow Jesus. So I'm not here to explain it all, but it has had an impact on us as the body of Christ. And, and there's also all the issues about mental health, issues around children and young people. There's less stability. <clears throat> But we have a God who is steadfast and sure. Jesus is our rock. He is the unchanging one. And we can, be, we can model a different way of being as the body of Christ and as new life here. And that's what we do. I mean, I just loved seeing Joy and Jesse in singing today with, a, with a, the worship group. Because that's what we want to model, isn't it? That we're all ages together. And for me, coming into New Life just over the last couple of years, I think really New Life has been doing well. Isaiah 26, 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. He is our rock. So all these changes may be happening, but we know that we can stand firm on the rock of Christ. So what about the Bible? What does the Bible say about family and generations? Now, the Old Testament emphasizes the bloodline of families. They lived in community. The people of Israel were all together when they heard the Lord speak through Moses. And I thought it would be good to just read from De Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. These commands were given to everyone. They weren't, the children weren't pushed aside somewhere else. They were all there together. So children heard the same as the adults. And they were to be impressed upon the children. To be talked about when they sit at home, when you walk along the road. I know that was one of the verses that stayed with me when my boys were little. And I'd think about talking about Jesus when we were driving along in the car, when I was walking them to school, when there was any sort of, if they fell over, we'd pray. Just generally talking about Father God and how much he loves them. We need to keep doing that. And I believe that you're pro a lot of you are probably doing all the things I'm saying. So, but I'm, I'm going to continue here. Today... Whereas we think about in the Old Testament, they were as a community all together. Today, it is just not like that. You know, I've already mentioned the new estates, but community needs building up. And I, I'm, I'm, as we've gone into home churches, we are missional in our home churches. And we are thinking about the area that we live in. How do we pray? How do we develop community? How do we do things to help people to feel that they belong with one another where they live? I know for Dave and I, we've lived in, in, in our close for 31 years now, and we've tried over the years to do things at Christmas and just bits and pieces. And although there aren't many of us who've really connected, there are those that have lived in the close for a long time, and they've said to us that they've appreciated the fact of feeling that they know the neighbours. And that's just significant. We just need to know one another, don't we, to feel that we belong. So, into the New Testament. The New Testament, the emphasis is on the family of faith, which is what we are. And it's through our love for Jesus and all he's done for us 
that it's about our attitudes. It becomes that our attitudes that in turn affects our behaviour, which dis distinguishes the family of Christ. So it's the relationship with Jesus first that changes us and enables us to think differently. And it's about the family of faith. So from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 5, if we're to think about what we should be like, there's some good guidance in here. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. I know that, that this is slightly different saying the same mindset as Christ Jesus, but it's about how we think. We need to think like Jesus. And in, that, in this passage, which is very full of, of, of things, I'm not going to go through it all, but I just want to pick out a couple of things. Um, the first is about having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. We are one in spirit and purpose. It's a done deal, that's what we are. The fight is to stay united. It isn't about the fact that we are, it's about staying and it's about the relationship between us and how we can actually express that in ways that are healthy for all of us and good and, and really meaningful. And it's also about our purpose. When you think about the children and being <clears throat> children with us all ages together, we're one in spirit, but our purpose needs to be similar as well. Our purpose is to declare Jesus. Our purpose is about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ because we love Jesus and we want others to love him. We want others to know just how good it is to have Jesus that we can talk to, that we can share our fears with, that when we go to school, we can know that Jesus is with us. When we go to a new school, we know that Jesus is with us. And I know that for some of you children, you're going to be facing a new school in September, and you need to know that Jesus is with you. And then for others, it's a new, a new school year. And that's just, that can be daunting, but you can know Jesus is going to be with you. So this is about knowing that we're one in spirit. And we need to approach one another in humility with the same attitude as Jesus. I've very often gone back to the verse in Ephesians that says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's because we love Christ that we submit to one another. And then I started thinking, oh, what would it look like submitting to a child? What would it actually look like? What does that mean? Submitting to one another. Are children included in this? Well, yes, they are. It's at submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And that submitting may be that saying sorry when we do things that aren't helpful to the children. It may be that when children, um, as they grow in Christ, that they may want to pray for us. So we submit ourselves to prayer. And that may be something that we need to learn more about together here. I also was thinking about how um, when I read scripture, I haven't been very disciplined in this, but I think doing this today is going to challenge me. I'm going to challenge you too, that when you read scripture, which is talking about how we behave with other people, don't just think about adults. So I'm talking to the adults now. Think about how it actually includes how we behave towards the children. Because I don't, maybe, it, maybe I'm alone in this, but for me, I tend to think about how I am with people I know best, which tends to be my peer group. But when we come to the Bible, the Bible is teaching us about all ages, about community, about family together. So it all applies to how we 
behave with children too and what our expectations are. And maybe we need to raise our expectations. We need to look to the interests of others. We need to be interested in one another and we need to listen to each other. thinking about um, whether to show you. Yeah, I'm, I think it would be good to have a little video, please. This is a video about a family praying, and I just thought it would be good because you've been listening for a few minutes and there are some children here and they might like to see something as well. And see. So we've got a video about a, ch a family. My name is Astaria, I am 14 years old. My name is Cody and I'm 11 years old. I'm Josh and I'm 13 years old. Hi, my name is Alana and I am 35. When we start Karakia, we usually start with a devotion. It's like a family devotion book where we kind of just look through and maybe something that's relevant for us at that moment. It might be something to do with siblings that are arguing or how to treat others and values and morals. We do prayer sticks. They have names of like our family and friends and schools and people from church and we pick one. We just pray for them. Sometimes we might get the same person all week and it's like, oh yeah, those people really need prayer. We get to like pick one out and see who we've got. <laughs> it's like a little game. <laughs> Biggest challenge was for them to understand what it was about and knowing that it was important was quite hard. For them it was just like, why are we doing this? And I want to play games or watch TV. If we can spend time an hour or so watching TV or being on our devices, we should make time to devote to God. They do know now how important it is. Sometimes we just think like, oh, we've got to pray every day or we've got to get together as a family every day and it just becomes really overwhelming. Look at your week and just, you know, find a slot um, that suits your family um, and spend a little bit of time. It doesn't have to be hours. Being a parent, I'm the main person that is around them so I know how important it is to um, set an example, be responsible, to show them ways of connecting with God. So we can be ourselves, getting to pray for others. Good to pray wherever you are and like, you'll be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Being together as a family. Within the kids, they look up one another pull each other up if they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, family devotions has a big part in that. With Haven, he plays soccer and so before his game he's always like, Mum, can you pray for me before I go on please? If one of us is sick, you know, like Josh will be like, Mum, I, I don't feel well, can you, can you pray for me? Prayer is becoming a normal part of who we are in our family. And, um, you know, hope that might inspire some of you children who may not yet have started praying as a family, but maybe you have. But that, that, I'm, I'm just encouraged to see teenagers really happy and talking about Jesus is being in the centre of their family. And that's what we want to see, isn't it? Jesus in the centre of our family. I like the lollipop sticks as well. I thought that was a great idea. So there's a little inspi inspiration for you as well. And I, I, actually, it reminded me, when we were in our old church, we had a, a life group, and we used stones, and we had our, each of us had a name on a stone, and we had it in a basket. And every time we met, we'd take a stone out to pray for one of the members of the group. So there are all sorts of creative things. We need to be creative together and try... And try and find time in our busyness, which, you know, it's hard for all of us. I want to go on to talking about our attitudes and expectations of children. This is where I get excited, because whenever I think about Jesus and children, 
God has so much for children. He's got so much more for children. The prophecies around children. And even this morning, I was being told that as a church, you've had loads of prophecies about the children. I've been picking up those from other places. And I wanted to, to um, oh, I just love it. First, though, let's think about what Jesus said about the children. He used an example of, ch- of a child to speak of the kingdom of God. So from Matthew Uh, 19 verses 13 to 14, the very familiar bit, but as I read this, please think of yourself as one of the people, one of the characters in the story, because it it might help you as you use your imagination to, to, to be in the story. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them, but the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. If we imagine ourselves in this scene, which character do you identify with? Do you identify with the parent who wants your child to be blessed by Jesus? Do you think you'd like to be like Jesus, blessing and praying for the children? Or maybe you think of yourself as the child who wants to be blessed. Or are you one of the disciples who's trying to keep the parents and the children away from Jesus? What about us as church? Do we always welcome the children in the way that Jesus wants us to welcome them? And I think, again, I think that as a church we probably do, but there's always more that we can do. And earlier in the year, at the conference that was held here, Rachel declared, God wants the children. The children are vital. So what are our expectations? I'd like to read to you a prophecy that um, I've come across in this book, which is about, um, which is from Jean Darnell whose name I know is familiar to me. I don't know a lot about her, but she did prophesy on various occasions. This was given in 1987. It seems a long time ago, but the way I've been thinking about it, there was a lot of renewal in the spirit amongst children at that time. And if we think of that, those people are now parents. So they've had experience of the spirit, but this coming, this, their children are going to be even more open to the Spirit. So God is going to do something even more with the present generation. So, this is what she said. The second thing is that the Lord is going to send a tremendous revelation of himself to boys and girls in this country, and this is the UK. Between the ages of 9 and 15, particularly, children will begin to have a revelation of Jesus. They will see him, They will know him, they will hear him, he will speak to them, he will come to them in visions and dreams, he will reveal his word to them, they will be converted and filled with the Holy Spirit and gifted by him, and they will start praying. They will be healed themselves and they will start praying for each other and there will be wonderful healings through these boys and girls. They will not only be the children of Christian parents. The Lord is going to manifest himself to those who are in non-Christian homes where there is no love nor real family unity, where there's no knowledge of the Lord at all. Perhaps not only for one generation, but for many generations, no Christian person has been in that family. But Jesus is going to meet them and reveal his power and his presence to them and his love for them. When they start coming to our children and to our teachers and telling them what they're seeing and hearing from the Lord, our duty will be to receive them and love them as they are because they'll be rough diamonds and they'll have rather unusual, unchurchy language. But their experiences will be real. Isn't that exciting? I believe that we're coming to that point of time where that's going to be happening. For myself, as I prayed for children in, over the years, when, again, it's a long time ago, but I prayed for children, and God gave me this picture once, and unfortunately I can't remember it exactly, 
But I do remember it was about a whole load of clouds and God breaking through the clouds and the Holy Spirit just coming on the children in power. And it wasn't that it was here, it was, in my mind, it was actually in one of the schools, the playgrounds of one of the schools locally. And I think, isn't that just something that we need to think about when we pray for the children, that God is going to do a mighty work by his spirit in this day on the children. And I just imagined, I mean, in the picture that I drew, I remember having children lying out in the spirit at, in, play, in a playground. And I think, wow, you know, the power of God to heal Someone falls over in the playground and you can say, Jesus can heal you. I'll pray. Jesus, heal this friend of mine. You can do that. So are our, are our expectations high enough about the children? I wonder. Are we actually expecting children to be totally part of what we do and even lead us? You know, the children... There's no baby Holy Spirit. No baby Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is for everyone. From the youngest upwards, as soon as a child is born, we can pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It, we don't have to wait for some magical moment. And the children can... I mean, I know that there was a time when there was a little child that I was... I had to make a decision, yes or no. And I said to this little child... I just want to ask you if you can ask Jesus, is it yes or no? And she gave me an answer, and so I, I acted on what she said, and that was the right thing to have done. Let's expect our children to hear from God. They have ears that are far more sensitive, certainly than to mine, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to know what God is saying. So let's listen to them. I've been so encouraged by talking with Megan um, Megan has all so many good ideas. Her vision for the children in the church is just wonderful. So I'm I'm sure we're going to be looking for looking ahead to some really good things and good times. But I also just want to come back to say let's think about how we relate to one another. And children and teenagers, I want to say to you, for me as an adult, sometimes I'm a bit shy as well. And sometimes it takes you children to speak to the adults as much as the adults to the children. We're all in this together. We all want to model being a family together. But it takes all of us to take responsibility to do it. So if you see someone who's miserable or not looking like they know where they are, go and chat to them just as much as it's the adult's job. It's all of our jobs, whether you're whatever age we are. Let's look after one another. So it's time to talk, I think, more about what we can do with the children, how we can, how we can include them. And I look forward to the time when their children are going to be participating as well in ministering in all sorts of ways because the spiritual gifts are there for, for children. We need to nurture and teach them, but they're able to do it too. And they may not do it like we will. We can, but they'll be able to do things that will surprise us. So I'm praying that we will be surprised by the children as we move on. And in our home church too, may that be the case. Because discipleship in home church, it's not just discipling the adults, it's discipling the children as well. And when it comes to mission, we need the children to be with us in the mission so they can learn and they can talk to any children that come along as well as us. So we can all do this together. So I think I better end there with praying. So I'd like to just pray for all of us as we come to an end. Let's pray for the children and the young people. Father, I just want to thank you for this, for New Life Church. I thank you for what is happening here amongst the children. And I pray, Lord, for more. We always want more. And I pray, Lord, that you would increase their hunger after God, that you would increase their experience of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit gifts, that you will increase all of us, our expectations of what you might do, that you will ex increase children's expe expectations of you and what adventures you may have for them now and in the future. 
We ask all this in and through the mighty name of Jesus.